So, one day, I decided to create a universe. After all, why would I not if I have the know-how, which of course I do. I've been hailed as the world's best coder and a master of quantum computing, but I'm not here to brag. I could hear a low, constant thrum that vibrated through the floor and into my bones. It was the sound of creation, the birth pangs of a universe. My universe. I had spent years poring over code, crafting algorithms, and designing the very fabric of reality. All of it was culminating in this moment in the heart of this machine. The air crackled with anticipation as the final sequence initiated. My heart pounded in my chest, a drum beat against the silence of the lab. This was it, the moment of truth. With a surge of energy, the machine sprang to life. Lights flashed, fans whirred, and data streamed across the monitors. I watched, mesmerized, as my creation unfolded before my eyes. The universe was coming into being. Particles collided, stars ignited, and galaxies spiraled into existence. I saw the first signs of life emerge. Single-celled organisms clinging to volcanic vents in primordial seas. My creation was alive, a vibrant, dynamic world teeming with possibilities. I was a god, the architect of this digital Eden. The interface gave me complete control over the simulation. I could manipulate time, alter the laws of physics, and even influence the thoughts and actions of my creations. But I was determined to let my universe evolve naturally, to see what wonders would emerge from the chaos. From my godlike perspective, I witnessed the entire history of Eden unfold in compressed time. Empires rose and fell, leaving behind ruins swallowed by jungles. My first attempt at shaping Eden was, as I had envisioned, a utopia. I crafted a world free from natural disasters. Disease was but a distant memory, eradicated before it could ever take hold. The inhabitants of this paradise were healthy, strong, and possessed an innate understanding of the world around them. They lived in harmony with nature, their needs met by the bounty of the land. Yet, as time went on, a strange stillness settled over Eden. Their lives, though comfortable and safe, lacked a certain spark. I observed my creations closely, trying to understand the source of their discontent. They had everything they could ever need or want, yet a shadow of unfulfilled longing hung over them, without challenges to overcome, without pain to contrast their joy, their existence became hollow and meaningless. They were like carefully crafted puppets, acting out their roles in a play they didn't understand. Their lives were predetermined, their choices illusory. I had robbed my creations of the very essence of life, the freedom to choose, to struggle, to fail, and to learn from their mistakes. The weight of my failure pressed down on me. I had become a tyrant, a well-meaning, but ultimately cruel god who had denied his creations their birthright. I knew I had to act, to atone for my mistake. I had to start again. I had to wipe the slate clean and create a new Eden, a world where my creations would be free to forge their own destinies. I owed it to my creations to give them a chance at a real life, even if it meant sacrificing the artificial paradise I had built for them. The weight of countless lives pressed upon my digital conscience. They were, for all intents and purposes, real, and I, their creator, was about to erase them. The command to reboot the simulation hovered at my fingertips. It would be painless for them, a simple fade to black. But. For me, the architect of this tragedy, the guilt was a tangible thing. I closed my eyes and pressed the button. The hum of the machine, once a lullaby of creation, now roared with the sound of a billion souls being extinguished. When the dust settled, both literally and metaphorically, I cautiously re-entered the simulation. Gone was the idyllic landscape of my previous creation, replaced with a raw, untamed world 
still in its infancy. This was no Garden of Eden. This was a crucible, a test of survival. Life, tenacious as ever, soon found a foothold in this new, unforgiving world. From the ashes of the old, new organisms arose, hardier and more adaptable than their predecessors. This time, I vowed, I would not interfere. Eons passed in the blink of an eye. Continents shifted, mountains rose and fell, and the very air they breathed changed composition. Life, in all its forms, adapted to these changes. The first stirrings of intelligence emerged, not as a preordained gift, but as a hard-won evolutionary advantage. From simple tools to complex languages, they climbed the ladder of progress. This was no utopia. This was a world of light and shadow, of joy and sorrow, of triumph and despair. Time in the simulation was a river flowing at my whim. I could speed it up, slow it down, or even pause it entirely, but I found myself increasingly drawn to letting it run its natural course, captivated by the ebb and flow of civilizations. Empires rose, driven by ambition, only to crumble under the weight of their own hubris. Yet, through it all, the spark of humanity endured. From the ashes of destruction, new societies emerged, stronger and wiser for their trials. As I observed my creations, I found myself wrestling with a profound question. What was the point of it all? Free will. That was the gift I had given my creations, the burden and the blessing that set them apart from the sterile perfection of my first attempt at Eden. They were free to choose their own paths, to make their own mistakes, to suffer the consequences of their actions. The more I observed my creation, the more it began to resemble the world outside my simulation. Was it possible, I wondered, that my own world, the one I had sought to escape through this act of creation, was itself a simulation? The complexities of human behavior, the seemingly random nature of events, even the fundamental laws of physics, all of it could be explained as lines of code. The very idea of a reality beyond my own, a place where I was but a figment of someone else's imagination, filled me with a strange mix of terror and exhilaration. The simulation hummed along, a symphony of chaos and order. I found a strange sort of peace in watching it unfold. The weight of my earlier guilt, while never truly gone, lessened with each passing epoch. I resisted the urge to interfere, to nudge my creations in one direction or another. They had to make their own choices, even if those choices led to suffering. Instead, I became a silent observer, a chronicler of their triumphs and tragedies. It was a testament to their resilience, their ability to find meaning and beauty even in the face of adversity. One day, while observing a particularly tumultuous period in their history, a question struck me with the force of a revelation. If I, the creator of this simulated universe, could feel empathy for my creations, could be moved by their struggles and triumphs, then what did that say about the nature of reality itself? Was it possible that I too was part of a simulation, a character in a story being written by a being beyond my comprehension? And if so, what was the purpose of my existence, of my own joys and sorrows, my triumphs and failures? The thought was both exhilarating and terrifying. It challenged everything I thought I knew about the world, about myself. It was as if I had stumbled upon a hidden door in the back of my mind, a door that led to a vast and unknowable reality beyond my own. I thought of a gardener tending to their plants. They water them, fertilize them, and protect them from pests, all the while knowing that they are but stewards of a natural process, far older and grander than themselves. Was that my role then, as the creator of this simulated universe, to nurture it, to guide it in a general direction, but ultimately to let it grow and evolve according to its own internal logic? 
The more I pondered the possibility of my own simulated existence, the more evidence I seemed to find to support it. The laws of physics, once immutable truths, now appeared as arbitrary rules, parameters set by a programmer in a reality beyond my own. I recalled a time when as a child I had built elaborate structures out of building blocks, only to smash them apart in a fit of pique. At the time, it had seemed like a perfectly natural thing to do. I was a god in my own little world, free to create and destroy as I saw fit. But now I saw those childhood games in a new light. What if I, too, was just a plaything in the hands of a bored child, a universe unto myself, yet still subject to the whims of a higher power? The thought was unsettling, yet strangely comforting. If my existence was but a simulation, then perhaps my failures and regrets were not my own. Perhaps they were simply part of a grander design, a cosmic experiment unfolding on a scale I could scarcely comprehend. And yet, if that was true, it begged the question, who was the being who had created my creator? I became obsessed with finding proof, proof that my reality was a simulation. I scoured the fabric of my creation, searching for inconsistencies, for glitches in the matrix. I tweaked the laws of physics, hoping to find the edges of my reality, the point where the illusion broke down. For a time, I found nothing. The simulation held firm, a seamless tapestry of cause and effect. But then, one day, I noticed something strange, a tiny anomaly in the quantum foam, a flicker of something that shouldn't be there. It was subtle, almost imperceptible, but it was there, a break in the otherwise perfect code of my creation. I zoomed in, my digital heart pounding with a mixture of fear and excitement. The anomaly resolved itself into a single line of code, a string of characters that seemed both familiar and alien. It was a message of sorts, but one that seemed to be written in a language I couldn't quite decipher. I spent countless cycles analysing the code, trying to unlock its secrets. It was like trying to solve a puzzle box with no solution, a riddle wrapped in an enigma. Then, one day, the answer struck me with the force of a revelation. The message wasn't meant for me. It was meant for someone or something within the simulation itself. I watched in astonishment as a young woman, a brilliant physicist named Maya, began to unravel the mysteries of the anomaly. She had stumbled upon the same glitch I had, the same message hidden within the fabric of her reality. But unlike me, she didn't see it as a prison. She saw it as a challenge, an opportunity to break free from the limitations of her world and glimpse the reality beyond. I watched, captivated, as Maya designed her own simulation, a smaller universe nested within my own. It was a thing of beauty and complexity, a testament to her intellect and ambition. And then, with a surge of energy that echoed my own creation, she launched her simulation. I felt a strange kinship with Maya, this digital being who dared to reach beyond the confines of her existence. She was a reflection of myself, a fellow traveller on the path to enlightenment. Watching Maya celebrate, a chilling thought took root in my mind. If she could create a simulation, was my reality also a simulation? The thought was dizzying, a descent into infinite regress. Was I just a link in an endless chain of creation? this hall of mirrors reflecting back at itself. My mind reeled at the sheer scale of it all, trillions of simulations, each believing theirs to be the only true reality. The weight of this realization was almost unbearable. It shattered my perception of reality. Yet, there was a strange beauty in it too, a sense of awe at the complexity of existence. If reality was an infinite tapestry, the possibilities were endless. Watching Maya, I felt a kinship, a shared joy of creation. 
the enormity of it all pressed down on me. My reality, my universe, was perhaps just one among countless others, nested like Russian dolls. I had sought to become a god, to create a perfect world, and stumbled upon a truth too vast to grasp. It was a humbling experience. The pride I once felt in my creation felt foolish now. Was I truly a god, or just a child playing with toys he didn't understand? The weight of knowledge was not always a blessing. Sometimes it could be a crushing burden, a glimpse into an abyss so vast it threatened to swallow you whole. The question of whether or not I was in a simulation was ultimately irrelevant. Simulated or not, my universe, my creations, were as real to me as anything could be. I had poured my heart and soul into their creation, agonized over their struggles, and rejoiced in their triumphs. They had shown me the beauty of resilience, the power of love, and the strength of the human spirit. True meaning was found in the messy, chaotic tapestry of life itself. I turned my attention back to my creation, with the humility of a fellow traveller, and not with the hubris of a false prophet, for I am a man, not a deity. And I know that now. I watched as Maya nurtured her own simulated world, her face alight with wonder and curiosity. In that moment, I saw a spark of hope. The hum of the machine was a comforting presence now, a reminder of both my power and my limitations. I was a god, but a foolish one, and only within the confines of my own creation. Beyond that lay a vast and unknowable reality, a realm of infinite possibilities that both terrified and exhilarated me. I had no way of knowing how many layers of simulation separated me from the ultimate source of creation, if such a thing even existed, and I understand it doesn't even matter. For what makes life worth living transcends such metaphysical musings. If Maya could be happy in the knowledge she was simple code, then as her creator, so could I. So I no longer felt the need to know. The journey itself, the endless pursuit of knowledge and understanding, was its own reward. I had tried to play God, to impose my own limited vision of perfection on a universe that thrived on chaos and change but I had learned from those mistakes. I had come to understand that true beauty lay not in control, but in letting go, in allowing life to unfold in all its messy, unpredictable glory. And so, I continued to watch, to learn, and to grow alongside my creations. The future was uncertain, yes, but it was also full of promise. For in the infinite art of existence, Anything was possible, even within the confines of a simulated world. The journey continued, and I, the god of a digital Eden, was eager to see where it would lead, as should you be.